Hey gang, welcome. Uh, my name is Ron Heiler and I will be your host for this tutorial uh, for Unreal Engine 4. Um, what I want to go over today is using an SQL database to maintain persistence between levels um, and also kind of as a for free thing, also as a save system. Uh, to do this, this uh, tutorial, if you wanted to follow along, you are going to need Unreal Engine, obviously. Um, I am currently using Unreal Engine 4 25.4, which is a late, the most current uh, stable version of the engine. Uh, there is a uh, version 4.26, I think, which is um, in its infancy. Uh, but, but anyway, that's what I'm using right now. Um, you are free, of course, to, to use a different version if you need to. Um, but again, things may not quite work quite the same. You'll have to adapt. Um, the other thing you will need for this is an SQL database. Um, I am using USQL Lite database. Uh, if we go here and pull that open, this is by Bruno. I'm not going to try to say his last name because I'll probably butcher it and I don't want to offend him. <laughs> but Bruno uh, is the author of USQL Lite database. And this is what we're going to be using to uh, maintain persistence between levels. So let's just talk about that for a second. Um, Unreal Engine is great at a lot of things, but one of the things it's not so great at is maintaining um, some sort of level persistence. And what I mean by that is if you uh, go into a level in your game and you muck about for a bit and you pick up stuff and you move things around and you open doors and whatever else, then you change to a different level. Um, and then you come back and reload that level again, everything's going to be back to the way it was at design time, which means everything's going to reset. Uh, Unreal Engine is really kind of more geared around um, games where you do one level and then you move on and you never go back to that level again, which is, which is good for a lot of games, but it's not so good for like a kind of an open world kind of game where you can go back and forth between levels. Um, now there's various ways to get around that. Um, you can use, of course, the game instance class, which is persistent across levels. Um, so anything you put in game instance, uh, when you load up another level, that, that will still exist. That's the only thing I think that's persistent. Uh, game mode will not persist across levels. Um, of course, obviously, uh, any level blueprints will not uh, be persistent across levels. Um, so game instance is a good thing to use um, if you want to maintain a certain level of persistence. But I'm I found that when I was working um, I just had too many objects to deal with, and I really needed some kind of database to hold things. And at first I thought, well, maybe we'll use tables. Uh, tables are great, except for that they're read-only at runtime. You can't really write to them. Um, you can only write to them during design time. Uh, once they're in the engine and running, they're meant to be static, so you can't really use them as a save thing. Um, so I went looking for a database, and I found this USQLite database. Um, so we're going to use this database to, uh, like I say, maintain persistence across levels. So if you do something in one level and you leave the level when you come back, um, it will be the way you left it. Um, I'm big into that kind of thing. It's It, it really uh, takes me out of a game experience if, if things revert back for no reason at all. Um, like if I go into a level and I open a door and then I later on come back to that level and that door is closed, I'm like, well, who closed that door? Why is that door closed? I opened that door. Who, what's the deal there? You know. So I like things to be persistent um, when I'm dealing with a, with a game that you can go back and forth between levels in. So anyway, um, just a word about USQLite database. You will need this if you want to follow along. Um, you very much, if you are new to USQL database, you very, very much need to go to the support forum. Um, and read through, as soon as it comes up, it's coming, read through this first page of threads, at least through, uh, I would say, let's see, where are we? The first four posts, five posts, really. Um, after that, it starts getting into questions. Bruno is really, really good at answering questions. Um, so if you have a question about the database, he will get back to you. I've actually written to him before myself and, and he got right back to me. Um, so, you know, uh, definitely take advantage of that if you need to. He's not going to teach you how to how to use the the engine. Um, that's on you. Uh, that's not, you know, that's beyond the scope of his uh, his program. So don't go asking him how to build levels and stuff, but if anything that has to do with the, with the database, he'll answer you. So um, 
go do go take advantage of that if you need to. Anyway, um, yes, if you're new to the database, do read this over carefully because you will save yourself a lot of frustration and time and effort um, by reading through this. Don't just skim through it; read it. So anyway, um, okay. So I've waffled on long enough. Let's go ahead and um, let's go back to Epic and let's launch the engine. So guys, um, while that's loading up, let me say one thing about the way I'm going to do this. When I'm looking at tutorials, I find the best tutorials are the ones that I can follow along with. Um, so I'm going to do just that. I'm going to make a, a tutorial where you can follow along from scratch uh, my project as long as you have SQL Lite and Unreal Engine 25 or sorry, 4.25. Um, on the downside, that's going to make this a little bit longer because we got to do a, a fair amount of setup for uh, to illustrate the problem that we want to solve and then actually get into the, the problem solving. If you're not interested in following along, um, there's timestamps in the description and so they should show up on the on the timeline. Uh, just skip to the bits that you're interested in. I mean, that's, that's the best thing to do because I imagine this is going to be fairly long. Okay, I do have a, a database test program that I have been working with. Um, I'm going to, that's going to be my reference guide. I've already built this, it works. Um, so uh, yeah, we will, uh, I will use that as a, as a reference, but I'm going to build it from scratch. So so let's start with a new project called uh, Uptype Games, and we're going to go, we're going to start with the third person. And go over here, we'll leave everything, we'll leave the starter content, everything in just in the default, and I'm going to call this, um, database uh, test two to not conflict with my database test one and we'll create that project. So we'll let that load up. The first thing we're going to need guys is to create two levels. Right, because we want to be able to switch back and forth between levels. So that's the first thing I'm going to do. Um, and then we're going to need a way to go between those two levels, um, which is all pretty easy, standard, normal stuff. Um, there we go. Okay. Let's go into content. Um, I'm going to open up the, uh, the content box over here. Um, let's just make sure our plugin is set. So let's go to settings, plugins. And, oh, and it's not enabled. Okay, let's enable uh, USQL Lite. Um, so you may notice when you are in uh, the marketplace, once you've bought this, I'm sorry, my library is what I'm after. Um, this says install to engine rather than add to project. So this is actually a plugin, um, but you do need to enable it. And we're not going to use this right away. And I think this is going to require, okay. All right. Uh, this is going to require an engine restart. So let me go ahead and restart the engine. And we'll, we'll uh, come back to it. Okay, so as I was about to say when we, um, when we left off, we're not going to use that right away, uh, but we will eventually need to use it. Let's just make sure it's on. There we go, it's enabled. Very nice. Okay. Um, first things first, uh, I do not like that um, this thing has stuck my maps way buried down in, in deep into the bowels of the thing. I like everything to be kind of on the front. So I'm going to create a folder and I'll just call this maps. And I'm going to take the third person map here and I'm going to copy it. Well, I'm going to actually, no, I'm not going to copy it. I'm going to move it over here. There. And then I'm going to rename it. So I'm going to call this level 01, like such. Then I'm going to right click and I'm going to duplicate it. And we're going to call that level 02. Very nice. That's all we need to do. Go ahead and save that. So we, there we go. We've got our two levels. Um, now I need a way to go back and forth between those two levels. So we're going to set up a little teleport pad for that. So let me, um, let me just pull that open on my thing so I know what I'm doing. All right. So let's go back to content. I'm going to make a folder again. And we're going to call this blueprints. I'm sure you guys have seen this hundreds and hundreds of thousands of times. And we're going to make a um, just a quick blueprint. 
in here we're going to call this um, so I'm going to create a new blueprint class and we're going to make it a type actor like usual and I'm going to call this um, level change uh, trigger this will be the thing that we use to switch back and forth between our levels so let's pop that open and I'm just going to drag it up here all right so first things first, we're going to put in a, um, we're going to add a component and I'm going to add a cylinder. So let's bring up the cylinders like such. Uh, oops, don't want to rename it. Let's bring up the scale tool and scale that way down on the Y axis. Actually, let's just go here and do 0 0.5. Oh, that's too far. 0 0.05. There we go. That's better. Okay, and then I'm gonna, I guess we can just leave it where it is. I think it's fine. Okay, then the other thing I'm gonna do is add another component to it and we're gonna add a, um, a box collision to it. And of course we're gonna scale that up a bit. Oh, I'm not on the box. Okay, get on the box, there we go. And we'll just make it roughly the size of the trigger. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, I'm going to scale this up some though. And let's just make sure that it's where I want it. Um, let me turn off the that. And we'll just scale that up there. That should do. Okay, very nice. We'll compile and save that. All right. Um, I want to throw in here a variable. And this is going to be of type string. So let's go ahead and throw in a new variable. And we're going to call this the, the new level. And we're going to make that of type string. Let's compile that. And we're also going to make that visible to the outside world, right? So there you go. Okay, there's our little guy right there. Um, all right, as long as we're here, let's go ahead and grab the box and uh, if we scroll down here um, and let's go ahead and hit the event on begin overlap of the box. Um, I'm gonna get rid of all these guys. We don't need them. So there we go. All right, we'll get a reference to our new level. What we want to do here is when we hit this box, we want to load the next level, right? So easy enough. This is very simple. And we're just going to say open level, open level. Uh, this takes a name. Should we make this a name? I guess we could do. Let's do that instead of a string. Yep. So that way we don't need to convert. Push that in there. Um, and I think that should do, right? I don't see any reason why that won't work. Um, we can leave those options alone. Everything should be fine. So when anything walks over that trigger, it's going to load the new level. Now, if you had NPCs in your game, of course, you'd want to check to make sure that it was your player character walking over the level and not something else or some other actor that walks over the thing because you wouldn't want the uh, level to load unless it's your your actual player character but for our purposes this is fine we don't need to worry about anything else beyond that okay let's go ahead and drag that into the, th the world and in our defaults over here wherever I, it, it is where is our defaults there we go um, for a new level for this one I'm going to say level underscore zero two and then we'll save that We'll go back to maps. Uh, we will load level 02. Go ahead and save all that. Uh, lighting needs to be rebuilt. Yeah, yeah. Um, go back to my blueprints, grab this guy, and stick him out here. We'll just kind of stick him right there. That's fine. And for this guy, we're going to say we're going to go back to level 01. 
save and let's reload let's go um, I'm gonna build the uh, build the level out just so the lighting isn't messed up there we go should be just about done it shouldn't take very long there you go that should pretty much be all that's needed for that okay uh, save that let's go back to my content browser let's go back to level one so we should be good Let's go ahead and we'll save that and play. Now, when I run over this thing, we jump into level two. Now you can't really tell because they're exactly the same level, right? So let's go ahead and fix, I don't even know what level we're in right now. Um, so let's go ahead and fix that, make sure I'm in level one. Um, we'll come down here to the post-processing volume and under rendering, I believe, if we go to, uh, Global illumination. This first level with the indirect lighting, um, we'll turn that on and we'll make things a little bit greenish. Just to, you know, just to keep it obvious that this is level one. Uh, we'll save that and we'll go into level two, do the same thing post process volume, indirect lighting. Only this time we'll make it a little bit more red. Nothing super, you know. Uh, I think super um, in your face, just enough so you can tell the difference. So let's go ahead and play that. We'll just make sure that everything's working. And boom, we're in the red level. Boom, we're in the green level. Just like that. Okay, so that's all working. Okay, let's stop that. The next thing I want to do, gang, is we need to start putting in some things that we want to be persistent. Um, in the level. So one of the most obvious things that people always do are pickups, right? And we're going to specifically do a coin pickup. So this is pretty simple. Um, let's go to our blueprints and we will uh, right click here. We will go to blueprint class and a new actor. And we're going to call this um, coin. Um, you may notice I don't use the BP underscore prefix or postfix that, that a lot of people use. Um, I just found it doesn't really need to be there. <laughs> I, I, know what it, I know that the coin is a blueprint. Um, if you prefer to use that, then by all means, be my guest. Um, I just have never really had a, an issue with uh, not having it there. All right, so we'll make a cylinder. Obviously, that's way too big. Uh, this is very similar to what we already did, so 0 0.05 should be about right. Um, let's see, I think I want to scale, I, I, I was screw this up. There we go, scale on the, the y-axis by 90 degrees, so it's sitting upright. Uh, we'll drag, whoops, that's not what I wanted. Let's put that back to zero. Um, we will drag up on the z-axis and just kind of let this sit on the floor. Um, I'm actually, that's probably too big. So what I'm going to do is scale down to 0. Point, I don't know, 0. 0.8 by 0. 0.8. That should give us a nice sized coin. Let's go ahead and compile and save that. Um, bring it back over to the level and let's pull them in here. Um, you know, yeah, that's fine. Okay. Okay, guys, a uh, couple things I might want to do with this. Um, just to be a little bit interesting, let's add a rotator to it. And I'm, I'm assuming it's going to rotate on the Z axis, and indeed it will. So let's go ahead and check that out. There you go. You got your, 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 uh, your coin, which I just got knocked out of. Okay. Um, I actually don't want that coin to uh, collide, so let's go down to um, collision. The cylinder. And we're going to set this to um, collision presets, no collision. Compile and save. All right. The other thing that I might, well, there's a couple things I want to do here. One, 
that's a pretty boring looking coin so just real fast um i know this is probably just bloating my thing i'm going to create a new folder and i'm going to call it materials i'm going to create a, just a real fast uh, material in here so let's create a material um, and we'll just call this gold uh, gold material why not let's drop in here super quick drop this in I just need a base color so I'm gonna hold down the four key and hit that in we'll drop that into the base color and instead of black we want something that's looks a little bit more gold let's see how that looks um, well, it's black because it's down here, but sure. Let's give it something like that. Uh, maybe a little darker. I mean, you know, sure, it looks kind of gold. Um, I'll hold down the one key, hit the button. Maybe we'll put in um, here a value of 0 0.5. And we'll drop that into the metallic. Um, maybe we'll even put it into the, uh, the roughness as well. I don't know. Yeah, it's fine. I, I don't want to get too involved with this, so let's go ahead and save that. There you go. We got our gold material. We'll drop it into the coin. Um, hang on a second. Let me just close this. We've got that selected, so we'll go in here, um, turn that off into materials, and we'll just drop it in. Boom. Compile and save. And there you go. It now looks like more of a gold coin than it did. So there you go. Uh, if we play that, we got ourselves a spinning, rotating coin, and we can run right through it. Very awesome. Okay. Let's... Um, I want to throw a bounding box around that as well. So let's grab a collision box. Uh, we'll move him. Hello, come here. We'll move him up around the coin. Now this coin's going to be spinning, so remember that. Um, so we want to be able. To, boy, that camera's moving fast. I should probably adjust the camera. We want to be able to hit it from all sides. So I'm going to increase this a little bit um, and make sure that we're surrounding the coin even when it spins. So that looks pretty good. So we'll compile and save. Um, then in the event graph, what I want to do um, is we'll start this bit. So basically, um, let's go down to the collider for this component, uh, and we'll say on begin overlap. And here we are. OK, here's a pet peeve of mine, guys. <laughs> um, a lot of times what people will do is get a player pawn and then from the return value you're going to go cast to third person character and you do this and from here you go to the other actor and you get um, some sort of is equal node right and you make sure that these are the same things right okay this is not strictly speaking, strictly speaking part of the tutorial. This is perfectly valid. A lot of people do this. Um, it works. The problem with this is when you do cast like that, that creates a hard reference to your third person character inside of coin. Which means every time you, you have a coin, it's going to load third person character. So you kind of hear horror stories about how... Um, people load up their their front end menu and end up loading 75% of their game because they've got hard casts in there like they'll, they'll cast to like I don't know maybe they want to display their play, player character on the front menu screen so they'll cast the player character but the player character casts them some other stuff and pretty soon you've loaded your entire game just by loading the main menu um, which is very slow and, and very inefficient um, I'm not going to tell you that you should never cast that's not the case. You should cast. Um, there are times when it's useful to do so. Uh, however, there are certain things that you can, if you create uh, some interfaces uh, to your third person character, probably to your game mode, maybe your game uh, instance, that's going to take out 
probably about 90% of your casts and um, make your, your loading of stuff much cleaner. So when you can, create yourself a blueprint, blueprint interface for those things you commonly cast to. Um, so it's very easy to do. Um, let me just quick show you how to do this um, if you don't already know. So I'm going to come into the blueprints. I'm going to, uh, you know what, uh, once again, this blueprint is not where I want it. Let's drag this. Stop it. Exit the damn tutorial, please. Uh, no. Third person character and third person game mode. I'm going to take both of these and I'm going to drop them into my blueprints. Because I like my blueprints up top. I don't like them buried in a, in a bunch of stuff. That's just, you know, then you can't find it. And if it's here, I know where it is. So that's, that's the whole point. Anyway, so let's go ahead and go to, um, we'll right click and we will pull open blueprints and we will go to blueprint interface. And let me just check my reference just to make sure that I'm going to do this uh, consistently. Now this is one place where I will use prefixes. So BPI, whoop, I'm in the wrong thing. Okay, hit F2. BPI underscore uh, third person character. Oops, try to spell it right. Person character. Okay. And let me open that up. And we're going to double click on this. The only thing I'm going to do right now is create one new function called get player reference. And um, we will need for that, we don't need any inputs, but we will need an output. So we'll add an output parameter, and this parameter is going to be called player ref. And we're going to make that of type um, third person character. Uh, object reference. There you go. And we can compile and save that. And then in our third person character, we can go into the class settings. We can go into interfaces and add this and type in BPI so I can find it right there. There you go. Compile and save that. There we've got this. Um, if we go back into, oh, I guess we don't need to. Um, We've got this interface that says get player reference. So if we double click on that, now we can very easily drag this out, go self, drop that in here, boom. And now if you ever need to reference the third person character, you can do so. It's very simple. So we're going to go back to coin and I'm going to get rid of all this crap. We don't need it. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do here now, again, just like the the uh, teleport box, you actually don't really need to do this because there's only one thing that's moving around at the level, and that's the character. But I'm going to do it because commonly, of course, you don't want something besides the uh, you don't want something besides the character to hit um, the thing and and set it off, right? In this particular case, it's going to be the coins. But so anyway, uh, I'm going to drag this out, and I'm going to say uh, get player. Try to spell it right. Player ref message. There you go. And so you can see the other actor it comes in as the target. And then we'll come out here, and we'll just say is valid just to make sure that we are in fact valid and that the player reference is in fact what we're expecting. Okay, very nice. Then I'm going to, um, I'm gonna go back into the, the interface and we're gonna actually add a new function. So let's add a new function and we're gonna call it add coins. Um, and in the add coins, function. Let me just check and make sure that I'm going to do this consistently. I know what I want to do, but I just want to make sure that we have this right. Um, so for this one, 
you don't need an output, but what you do need is an input, right? Because you need to know how many coins to uh, to increment. And this is going to be of type integer. And there you go. So compile and save. That should be good. Uh, that's all we need to do here. So then we go into third person character and we're going to do the add coins thing. Oh yeah, sorry, <laughs> I'm trying to click it. Uh, no, you don't need to do that. Because it doesn't have an output, it, it goes in as a um, an, an event. So we shall set that up um, here uh, in the event graph. So I should be able to, from here, pull this out. Nope, sorry, that's the wrong thing. Can I pull this out from here? Event add coins. There we go. There's my event. Okay. All right. Um, so this is my third person character. This is where we're going to actually store the variable for how many coins the player has. So I'm going to add a variable here and we're going to say, call this gold coins. And I'm going to make this of type integer, of course, and that's all we need for that. And then, um, so what we need to do is we will get a reference to the gold coins. We will pull it out here and we will say um, plus, we're going to do integer plus integer. Actually, I don't like that. I'm going to put it down there. So to keep our nodes kind of neat. Um, and then we're going to come from here and actually we'll just grab it from over here, set gold coins. And so this is the kind of standard thing that you guys will are probably used to seeing. We just take our current gold coins, we add the coins that we're using from the event and setting it back into gold coins again. All pretty standard stuff. Okay. So that's all set up. Now we have to go back into coin. This is the point at which we need to continue on with this. So what we want to do here is from, if, if the thing is valid, we want to add coins as a message. Um, our target is the player reference, right? That's what we just determined. I'm going to, ah, dang it, grabbed the wrong one. I'm just going to pull this down here. And we'll put this back in because it screwed me over. Okay, what do we need for coins? Well, for here, what we can do is um, add ourselves another variable of type integer. We're going to call this coin value. Okay, and we'll make that an integer. That way you can actually set up different value coins if you want to. And I can even make that uh, public so we can we can uh, do it from there and then I'll grab this drop this out here we'll get coin value hook that up and there you go that's all that we should have to do for that um, yeah for now we're good okay compile and save um, for right now I'm going to set the coin value to one as the default and if we go into into here um, I will create like maybe five coins. I'm just holding down the alt key guys. So there you go. Very nice. Okay guys. So, and if you play this, um, what you're going to find is nothing seems to happen. Now we are hitting these, we, this, we should be hitting these as far as I can tell, unless I did something wrong. Uh, but you can't tell that anything's happening. So let's make a quick fix to fix that. We'll go back into coin. And after we've added the coin to the thing, we're going to destroy actor, like such. And I guess we, why did, what, what? Destroy tracker. Okay, let's try that again. Destroy actor. I don't know why it's not coming up. Just 
destroy act destroy actor. Thank you. Jeez. All right, we want to destroy the, the coin, and of course that's a self, right? So we'll do a self tart uh, reference. So once you've uh, once you have overlapped, you get the player reference, you add the coins to the player, and you destroy the actor. So that's fine. Um, let's also do, let's go back into the add coins function. And just for debugging purposes, I'm going to come out here and we're going to print string. And we're just going to set the number of coins just to print out, just so we know that we're actually hitting them and that things are working as they're supposed to. All right, let's go ahead and play. And let's make sure that this all works. Let's not hit the uh, thing. And there you go. The actor's destroyed. You see two, three, four, five come up on the thing. Okay, let's go back to here, back to the front, and you can see they're back, but we'll deal with that later. Um, okay, very nice. I'm going to load up level... Actually, before we do that, I'm going to grab all these guys, and we're just going to move them over a little bit so that they're not right behind that panel, so I don't have to keep going around that panel. Okay, let's go ahead and save that. Let's go back to my maps. Let's go to level 2. Sure. And same thing here. Um, we'll go to Blueprints, take in our coin, drop that in. We'll hit the Alt key to got to let go and hold the Alt key again. Three. And we'll do them horizontally instead of vertically. There you go. OK, let's go ahead and play that. And again, one, two, three, four, five. Oh, that mouse cursor thing is going to drive me crazy. Um, I'm going to turn that off in just a second. Let's go back here. One, two, three, four, five. So a couple of problems that you've already probably noticed. One, if I go back to the other level, the coins are back. And two, notice how it's not saving that variable. Of course, we knew that because it's on the player character. The player character is not persistent from one level to another. Basically, it's getting destroyed and rebuilt on this other level. So that variable is getting reset. So... There you go. All right, let's make this a little bit more functional. Um, what was I going to do? Oh, yeah, I was going to tank that thing off, wasn't I? Um, oh, boy, if I remember where that is. Uh, let's go to Edit, Editor Preferences. I'm going to hmm, go down to, uh, oh, do I know where this is? Um, level Editor Play. And I think it might be under Show Mouse Control Label. I'm going to turn that off because it drives me crazy. There we go. Now that's out of my way. All right. I like that better. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. I had to get that rid of that thing. It's Every time I start a new project, I, I have that pop up, and I have to remember where it is to turn that off. By the way, guys, before we get any further into this, just let me make this disclaimer. I am not the world's foremost expert on the Unreal Engine 4. Far, far from it. Um, I probably know just enough to be dangerous. <laughs> so, you know, do not expect me to um, be an expert on this stuff. I am absolutely not. Um, I still consider myself fairly beginner level. So, you know, uh, keep that in mind. If I make a mistake, and it's very possible and likely that I will, um, just let me know. And uh, I, I have a pretty thick skin. I, I, I take criticism well. Um, so just let me know. I'll, I'll fix it. Or um, even if it's bad enough, I will either make a comment about it or uh, even upload a video about it if it's something that's really bad. Um, so yeah, you know, it's all, it's all good. Okay, so that's, um, that's good. Everything's good there. I wanted to make a second system that I want to keep track of. And the reason I'm going to do this... Um, We've got one system, really we've got two systems right now that we need to, we want to keep track of persistently. We've got the coins and their existence, or lack thereof, and we've also got the variable on the third person character, uh, his wealth, or his, his total gold coins, that we want to make persistent. Um, I want to do a third one, uh, and you'll see why later on, but just so there's something else that we can look at uh, for persistence. Now, to do this, I'm going to make 
uh, just so you guys can follow along if you want to. If, if I was doing this on my own, I would actually bring in an asset right now, like a pre-built asset that I didn't do because I am not a good artist. I, I suck at art. And um, there are people who do it way, way better than I do. <laughs> yeah, but I'm going to make a really, really crappy door so that we have something to uh, to work with. So let's make a new blueprint, cla blueprint class in the Blueprints folder. Phew, hard to say. And we'll, of course, make it of type actor. And we'll call this um, doorway. So let's pop into here. So this is probably going to be our most complex uh, blueprint to date. But to start off with, it, it'll be fairly easy. Um, what I'm going to do is drop in a, uh, drop in a, a cube. Whoops. Oh, I don't want to rename. I do that every time. I don't know why. Um, and we'll scale this down to, I don't know, something like that. Not that far. Um, it scales 0.25 by 0.25. That's fine. Uh, we'll drag him up and we'll drag him over. Um, I'm going to create another one. Same thing. Actually, take that back. Can we, um, can we copy this? I think we can duplicate this, can't we? Uh, duplicate, yeah. Okay, we'll drag this over. And I don't know, right about there. Um, I have no idea about the scale right now. And anyway, and we'll duplicate that again. Drag it over. Come here, you. And I'm going to rotate it on, I think I want the Y axis, 90 degrees. Drag you. Come here, dude. Come here, man. Drag it up. Um, I'm just creating a really sloppy, fast, dirty doorway. Uh, I turned off the, uh, the scaling. That's not the scaling, but the, you know, the grid snapping. Um, let's compile and save that. I'm going to... Let's go back into level one. Why am I in level two? Let's go back to maps, level one. Let's just pull that out just to see what the scale looks like. Because, of course, you really, you never really know, right? Until you actually try to to use it. Okay, let's go play that and make sure our character can get through that. No, that's way too small. Yeah, okay. Uh, right. Let's fix that. We're going to bounce that up a lot. Um, in fact, let's double it. I'm going to go 0.5 by 0.5 by 2. Whoops, did I not say 2? I thought I meant to say 2. And then this one, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 2. And we'll move that out. I'll move this up. Again, I don't mean to make this a big, huge deal. Um, but we just need a basic doorway, and then this needs to be uh, two. And we'll just throw that together like that. I mean, something like that, right? Okay, let's try that and make sure... Well, I mean, it's... No, uh, okay. Um, obviously, I'm not sitting on the doorway. I guess I should have. Uh... Move this around a little bit. You guys may notice that when I'm hitting, I'm trying to find the right, right widget, the right uh, tool widget to to use, I just kind of hit the buttons until I find the right one. I haven't got them memorized. Okay, this thing is terrible. Um, no, I don't like that. There. Okay, let's not... I, I don't want to make a big deal out of this. Let's just <laughs> go ahead and make sure that it works. The character can, in fact, pass through the doorway. Very nice. Okay. Very good. Um, F1. I'm actually not really loving this. Let's drag that up just a scooch. Okay. All right, we got our door. We got a 
part of a doorway. Um, the next thing I want to do is um, I'm going to take one of these cubes again and I'm going to duplicate it again. We're going to drag this over here. Come here, drag this over here. I'm going to reduce it on the y axis to about point 15, something like that. We're going to increase its scale. Tell you what, I'll just do it manually. These doorposts are too big. I don't like it. I don't really want to make a big, huge fuss about it, but on the other hand, it's got to be at least semi-functional, right? Let's see what I'm doing. Okay. Um, I'm just going to reduce this. There you go. That's better. Okay. And this guy will do like such. Okay, that looks like a pretty decent doorway, right? Compile and save. All right, very nice. Now, we're gonna want this door to be able to open and close, right? Um, and I'm gonna rename this part actually, the door. And the rest of it, I don't care. So, now here's a problem. We're gonna rotate along the z-axis. If I rotate this right now, it rotates around the pivot point. Now for some reason, you can't change the pivot point inside of a blueprint. You can change the, the pivot point inside the level editor. Um, like if I were to grab this, if there was just a, a static mesh, I could reset the pivot point. The, the engine does allow that. It does not allow that in the actual blueprint. There's no way to do it. So there's a little trick you can use here if you need to change a pivot point inside of a blueprint like we need to do. Now, again, if I was doing this in a real game, I'd use an asset that somebody already built and I would take it into 3D Maya, uh, Maya or 3D Studio Max or Blender or whatever it is you want, you want to use. Um, and you can uh, change the pivot point there. And when you import it in, it'll keep the pivot point that you have. But since I don't want to do that here, since you guys want to follow along, what I'm going to do is grab an arrow, drop him in. And he's already in the wrong place. Uh, <laughs> I want to actually no. Ah, you damn fool. Let's delete that. Go to the scene route and add an arrow. There you go. Um, now we can parent the door to the arrow, and now I can put the arrow where'd I go? Wherever I want. And I think actually, uh, let's undo that for the moment. Let's put the arrow first. Let's grab him. Drag them up. Doesn't matter where, really. Um, but what does matter is that this arrow sits on the edge of the door. I mean, right about there is fine. Um, and, you know, halfway up is good. <sighs> this camera's moving too fast. Let's try to drop the camera speed down just a scooch. That's better. Okay. So we'll stick the arrow there. We're going to take the door and we're going to parent it to the arrow. And now when I move the arrow rotation, the door comes along with it and it rotates at the point of the rotation of, the, of where the arrow is. So that's that's a trick. If you ever need to, to move a pivot point inside of a blueprint, you can do it that way. Okay, let's compile and save. Um, very nice. We take a look at our door. It looks pretty good. All right, um, one other thing I kind of want to do, this is a pretty boring looking door, so just real fast because I'm kind of a, a stickler. This probably isn't totally necessary, but I'm going to go ahead and do it anyway. I'm just going to add a couple of materials. Actually, in fact, you know what? Delete that. I'm going to just duplicate this one twice. We'll just keep the same material. And instead of gold, we'll say, um, I don't know, blue material and uh, red material. 
Now let's actually make those blue and red. Uh, we'll take the color, go over to blue. I mean, sure, it's fine. Um, save and close that. Uh, the red material, same thing. We'll come over to red. I mean, you know, something like that is fine. Save, close. I'm going to grab the red material, have that highlighted. We're going to go to our doorway. We're going to grab this guy. We're going to slide him into here. Here. And here. And we're going to save that. Well, actually, let's just go back here, grab the blue material, grab our doorway, grab the center door, and we'll just drop him in there. There you go, the ugliest door you have ever seen in your life, but it's going to work for us. So yeah, make sure my arrow's in the right place, it looks good. There you go. We have a doorway. And I'm just going to hold down the Alt key and make this a couple of... Uh, levels deep, and then um, actually, hang on a second, let me rotate this doorway by 90 degrees, and we'll just drop him back here, and I'll hold down the Alt key and drop another one over here, and there you go. Save. Let's go to our other map. This was level one, right? Yes. Let's go to level two. We'll take a couple of doorways and we'll drop him in here. Boom. And we'll drop another doorway in here. Boom. Save that. Go back to level one. And there you go. Okay, our doorways are just about set up. Um, how far into the video are we? We're probably pretty far, and we're still in setup mode. We haven't even gotten to the point where I'm showing the problem, although we, you've seen some of it already. Um, but yeah, like I said, this is going to take a minute. The thing we want to do is open up, close that door when we hit... Um, we're just going to use a, a, a box trigger to do it. Nothing fancy. So I'm going to go to the door, doorway scene route. We're going to add a component. Um, we're going to do a, a collider. Box collision. Boom. St Stick him in here, um, grab the tool, and it doesn't have to be perfect. This is going to be an invisible thing. Um, can actually get him a little bit higher, although it doesn't really necessarily have to be the height of the door or anything. You just have to be able to hit the box. And that's fine. Just like that is fine. Okay, let's go down here and go to um, our events. And on begin overlap, we'll come in here to the event graph. All right, let me pull up my doorway so I know, make sure I know what I'm doing. So I can be uh, perfectly legal with all this. So we'll come out here again, we're gonna go get player reference. The message. Uh, we'll do the other actor as a target. And then we'll say, um, we'll come out here and say, is valid. Make sure that is in fact the player character. Drop him in there. All right, so now we know we've, our player character has hit that box. Okay, we're going to give this door its own variable, and I'm going to call this um, door is open. And we're just going to leave it as a boolean. And I guess we can make it public. I, actually, it doesn't really matter. I don't necessarily think we need to make that public. Um, yeah, I, it doesn't matter. Okay, so we're going to grab this variable, drag it out, get the status of the door. Uh, we'll come out here. We'll, we'll hit the hit a branch, and we're going to say if the door is open and couple of things. First of all, we'll do a, well, um, we'll do a set. We'll copy and paste that down. So drop those in. Um, so if the door is open, we're going to 
we're about to close it, so we'll, we'll set the door back to closed. Um, if it's closed, which is to say the condition is false, we're going to set it to open. Okay, so that's step one. All right, then I'm going to drop in here a timeline. I'll just do a real quick animation. So we'll add a timeline. Um, we'll say door open. So what do we want to do here? If the door is open, we want it to close, right? So we're going to we're going to do an animation of the door opening. So it's already open at this point. We're going to play this in reverse so that it closes. If it's open or if it's closed, we're going to open it, which is the the regular animation, right? So that's what we're going to do. Um, let me just pop in here and make sure that I get this consistent with what I want to do. Okay, so I've just double clicked into the um, Where's my doorway? Uh, I just double clicked into the animation. And what we're going to do is add a, um, a float track. And this is going to be, well, I'm just going to call this door open. And we're going to shift click here and shift click at about one second. Um, so this one we're going to set to zero. We're going to set the value to zero. That's fine. This one we're going to set to one second. Is that what I did? Yeah, one second. And we're going to set the value to 90. Okay, so that's all there is to that. We're going to hit the arrow keys. We're going to grab both of these points. I'm going to, I think it's right click and we're going to auto. So just kind of give it a little bit of a curve so it opens up fast and then slows down as it gets to the end. So there you go. That's all there is to that. Uh, I'm going to set the length to one use the last keyframe. I, you know, I think either one of those is fine. You can either set it to one or use last keyframe. Doing both doesn't hurt. So we'll compile and save that. Okay. Uh, sorry, we're not done doorway yet. So we're, we're done with the, um, the basic animation. So at, at time zero, it's going to set the, uh, the, the float value. We haven't set it to anything yet. We're going to set the float value to zero. And at time one second, we're going to set the float value to 90. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. Now from there, what I want to do is throw in a, um, from here, we'll go from the, from the door uh, open animation, we're going to put in a make rotator. And we're going to hook this into, not to the Z, we're going to hook this into, or not to the X, we're going to hook it into the Z. So I'm going to turn this off. Boom, like such. Um, and from here, we're going to set relative, relative, relative uh, rotation. Um, actually, no, I don't want the door. My bad, I want the arrow. Let's bring in the arrow. We want to rotate the arrow, not the, do not the door. Like such. Because remember, the door itself has a, has, the, has a wrong pivot point. The arrow is the one, the pivot point that we want to rotate. So we will, on update, we will we'll do that. And that should, I think, work. Let's just find out. Well, okay, <laughs> it knocks me into the doors facing the wrong way. So these doors are fine, um, but I got these doors facing the wrong direction. I want them the other way. Okay, no problem. Let's uh, just quickly come in here. I'll set their rotation to uh, 270, just to spin them around. Same thing for this guy, 270. There you go, save and play. Okay, there you go. That opens, that opens, we got the coin pickups, we go to the other level, we grab all the coins, we open up the doors, very nice. Cool guys, we're almost done, we're almost done with the setup. <laughs> this is as far as we've gotten, is the setup, and uh, I'm currently on an hour into this video, yipes. I mean it'll cut down a little bit, but not by much, this might be about a two hour video guys. My apologies for that, but it's a lot to go over. I mean, I could have skipped all this and said, this is the level that I set up, set it up just like I did, but then you wouldn't be able to follow along. And so, 
like I said, I like to be able to follow along with videos. So. Um, let me just see level two real fast. I want to check something. Yeah, I don't like that. I'll pop you up a little bit. Everybody says, I, I see this all the time, hit the end key and it'll drop to the floor. And it works. <laughs> I swear to God, that never works for me. Maybe it's just a blueprint thing. Huh. Does it work on a static mesh? I swear I've done this a thousand times and it's never worked. But apparently, now it works. Okay. Um, and I just screwed up my lighting. Let me just rebuild it real fast. Okay. Uh, well, I take back what I was about to say. I've used the end key a zillion times and it never hits the floor when I do that. But this one just hit the floor. Anyways, uh, I guess so. I take it back. Maybe I was doing something wrong before um, in the other 900,000 times that I've tried to do that. Anyway, um, one other thing I want to do for setup. Let's go back to the content browser. Um, let me make sure that I know what I'm doing. Um, I want to be consistent with what I did before so we don't get all screwed up. So I'm going to go back to um, content. I'm going to create a new folder and I'm going to call this um, user interface. Now I'm only going to create one user interface for this and it's going to be super, super simple. Um, but if I was creating a real game, this is kind of the setup that I usually use. Um, interface, um, materials, maps, uh, and blueprints are my very basic ones. And geometry, not so much. I, I usually put geometry under maps. Um, but yeah, this is pretty standard stuff for me. So I like to keep it, you know, <laughs> the way that I usually do it. So we're going to right click in here and hit user interface and I'm going to hit a widget blueprint and we're going to do uh, in-game UI. And the only reason I'm doing this is so that we have an actual visual, visual representation of what we're going to do. All right. Um, I'm going to drop in here, first of all, a horizontal box. horizontal box. Let's put one in. Okay, grab him. Uh, we'll drop him over here. Um, I'll anchor him to the that side since he's over there. And I'm going to make him a little bit bigger. Something like that. Um, so in that box, we're going to put some text. Boom. Um, maybe two texts. I think that's pretty good. That's that's really all I need. Um, we're going to change your text to say, oops, come on, work with me here. Gold, colon, and I'm going to actually just put a space in there. And we're going to, that's terrible. We're going to increase the font to about 60. Is that what I did before? Let me just check. I, not that it matters, but um, I like to be consistent with what I did before. Uh, hang on, let me just see what I did. Yeah, that's, that's what I did. Okay, this one I'm just going to set to zero. And we will also set his size to 60. All right, so now we can actually drop this down a bit. And actually it's a little bit far over. We'll make him room for like maybe three digits just in case we have 300 gold or something. Okay, very nice. That's all we really need to do for that. So I'll compile and save. All right, let's get this uh, loaded into the, um, the the game. I'll go to level one, uh, content maps, level one. Yeah, I'll go ahead and save all that. Okay, let me see where I did this. Probably in the third person character. Let me just double check and make sure I know where I did it. Or it might be in the game interface. Okay, so yeah, in my uh, other one, I, I put it in third-person character, which is a pretty common place to put it, I guess. So let's go to um, Blueprints and third-person character, and we're going to put in an event here, unless it's already in here. Uh, let's see, do we have it in here? We do not. Okay. Let's drop in a new event. Uh, begin play. And I'm sure you guys know where I'm going with this. Um... We'll throw this out here, create a widget of class in game UI. And 
And then we'll just do add to viewport. Boom. With that as a target. All right. Compile, save, just make sure that works. And there it is, gold zero. We'll drop over to the other level. There it is, gold zero. It's all good. Okay. Um, right, let me pull that up and we'll go to the event graph. Okay. Just let me real quick in the third person character. Did we set up a interface for this? No, we did not. Okay. Um, I haven't set this up yet. So we're going to go into my blueprints. Now you could, it is very easy to just use the player reference. Um, in fact, I think you probably could do that. Um, let me try it. I'm just curious. So let's go down to, um, we're going to grab this guy. We're going to bind his text to a function. And I'll just leave it as get text zero. I mean, you know, yeah, whatever. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to uh, get player reference, get player reference message. Let's drop that in. Now it needs a target, of course. Get player pawn is will work for our target. If you don't have another way of getting this, a boom, that'll do that. And I think that's fine. I don't think this causes any issues um, that I know of. <laughs> uh, so then we should be able to say, um, what did I call it? Uh, gold coins. Get gold coins, yeah. Like such. Um, from there, we just plug that into the text, and I can do that, kind of clean that up a little bit. And there you go. And that should compile save when we run, then update the gold coin numbers. There you go. And with that, guys, we are done with setup. Now, let's go over the issues. Actually, let's, before I do that, let's take out that, um, that coin thing. Uh, where did I put that print? <laughs> That's a good question. Where did I put that print? Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. Let's see. Well, you can get rid of these. These are unnecessary. Um, there it is. We don't need this. So we know that's working. Okay. We're all done setting up. So let's go over the problems. There are currently three issues. Number one, if I open this door, door opens fine. I can open that door, the door opens fine. I can grab the coins, the coins all disappear, and everything looks great. We move to a different level. Problem one manifests itself. Suddenly we lose our gold as we move to the new level. Gold went back down to zero. We can collect these coins, and that's fine. We're back, we can open these doors. Jump back into the other level, and you see problems two and three. The doors are now closed. The gold is back. All of this is undesirable. Okay, for a game which, in which you never come back to the levels that you've left, that's perfectly fine. That works. You would just have to take, um, you could just take that that gold variable and dump it into game instance, and it would stay uh, throughout the game until you left the game. Um, you'd have to save it somehow when you when you exited the game, but it would stay. Um, but that's not, you know, that's one way to do it, and that's perfectly valid, but that's not the way we're going to handle it here because we want to use databases, and we also want to um, save the game persistently between sessions, not just between levels. So um, for that reason, uh, this is an issue, right? Okay, 
So we're done with setup. Now we can go to part two of the whole thing, which is probably going to take another hour. I'm already over an hour into this. Um, the databases. Thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this video, please take a second to comment, like, and subscribe. All these things really help me out. I'd like to say a big thanks to all my patrons whose names are appearing on the screen right now. Thanks a lot, guys. I really do appreciate it. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more great content, consider joining my list of patrons. There's a link on the screen in the bottom left corner. Thanks a lot, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.